day. She is the deputy opinion editor of Newsweek and author of Bad News, How Woke Media is Undermining Democracy. Back to you, Angar Sargon. Great to see you. What made it woke? The abandonment of the working class. Journalism mm. used to be a working class trade. It was a very low status job. Journalists lived in working class neighborhoods. They lived next door to factory workers and linemen. Jimmy maybe. Breslin. Exactly. Maybe a little bit more money than them. They saw themselves as outside of power, demanding justice on behalf of the little guy. Throughout the course of the 20th century, there was a status revolution among journalists to where journalism became basically a, an elite caste. It is now the provenance of basically people who are very, very, very highly educated, who come from rich, the rich parents who come from money. Um, journalists, I mean, of course, there are exceptions, but by and large, the pathway to becoming a journalist now is through the elites, through elite universities. And that has, as journalists ascended to the ranks of the elites, they abandoned the working class that they used to belong to. And I argue that today they're using a moral panic about race to distract from the ways in which they have benefited from income inequality in America. So it's a distraction from the real divide, which is economic and about class rather than political even. So I would even say the tribalism, it's not about politics, that's a mirage. The divide in America is about class. And when did great, this change great, take place? Great. Slowly and then all at once. It started around the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. In the 60s, people got televisions. Tastes good as fresh perked. Instant Folgers. Which meant that suddenly a, a profession where college was never a premium, the majority of journalists never had a college degree before that. After that, the newspapers wanted a more interpretive kind of journalism because you could get the immediate stuff directly well, from the TV. that's not a bad thing. That's, that's not a, a bad thing degree, at all. Right? So, well, I mean, I'm kind of, I kind of think for a journalist, I think that it, it's had a very corrosive effect. A I'll college that, degree? Yeah, I'm going to get to that in the Undermining Democracy bit. So the 70s, you had all the president's men. This movie came out, right? Oh. And suddenly, like a journalist could be this like sexy sex pod who right. brings down a president, you know? <laughs> yes. Suddenly it seemed like it, it, it was a glamorous profession all of a sudden. So someone like JFK who worked on the Harvard Crimson, he would never have dreamed of becoming a journalist because it was so low status and he was on this like meritocratic rise. But after that movie, suddenly people who wanted to become famous, mm. who wanted to be a big deal, wanted to have high status they started considering becoming journalists these pressures increased increased by the 80s and 90s journalists were much more highly educated much more affluent um you know much more liberal than americans overall so in 1937 less than half of journalists in the elite washington cohort had a college degree today it's over 92 percent Right now, remember that only 36 percent of Americans have a college degree. So that disparity is a really big mm. deal. Right. But, but it really took off with digital media. What happened with digital media was essentially we can learn so much about our readers and our viewers from the back end that we could, you know, journalists can, could start to really target their but journalism. I, now I thought Just, I read something in your yeah. book about paywall, that that was the big. So around 20, 2011 was when The New York Times erected its paywall. What happened then was when the kind of the woke revolution really took hold in digital media, which is to say that words like um, um, oppression, marginalization, people of color, people of color and marginalization in the same sentence, right, creating that neural pathway, right, that kind of woke worldview where, you know, white people have all the power and are uniquely evil and, and people of color have no power, no agency and need our help and, you know, need us to take care of them. That worldview started to appear um, in the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR, the Atlantic, CNN, MSNBC, all of the liter liberal media outlets started to use these words with just X exponential frequency white supremacy right went from being mentioned you know 75 times to being mentioned you know 750 times in one year right there's just this outpouring of um of articles that were obsessing over race all the time starting when the media went digital and that really had an impact on how white liberals started to think and talk about race Matt Taibbi wrote an article last year I thought was fantastic called We Need a New Media System, which is kind of ironic because he's on one called Substack. <laughs> but he meant, I think, a bigger one than that. And I, I thought the great line at the end was, media companies need to get out of the audience stroking business. Mm -hmm. And his point was that, yeah, see? I think his point was that they work backwards as to, let's not find the truth. Let's say the thing that we know our audience is going to go, mm, that's right. That's the problem. Um, I will say I think you can tell a lot about 
who um, the New York Times and the Washington Post and the liberal outlets are catering to based on what you read there, exactly like you said. So who are they stroking? And it's these liberal elites who have these, you know, vanity morals that they often impose on the working class, things like defund the police, that actually hurts working class <laughs> black <laughs> Americans more than anybody else. 81% of black Americans oppose it, but it's the only view that you could read in the New York Times. I'm sorry, well, for, no, much, no, that, that, that for much of 2020. That particular accusation is not true. Um, I mean, you certainly read about the defund the police movement, but you read plenty of voices and plenty of articles about the resistance to that. You read about Biden and many Democrats saying, no, that is not a winning path much, for our much, party. Much, much, later. I mean, when it became ah. safe. Ah. With, like with COVID. Ah. Right, when it becomes safe I, to, oh, to, to think, say... That's the ultimate. I think that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, who right. bore the brunt of the of the lockdown burdens? It was the working class. Yes. Rich people sat at home and, and they turned they turned being right. at home into a virtue when actually it was a sign of economic privilege. Right. That's that's but wait true. a second. You, since that's you've been beating point. up on the Times, and I'm not here to defend it, I see its flaws. I mean, the Times' pandemic coverage was marvelous, and much of it from the very beginning was devoted to the disparity right, but then, but of then, impact. But then they fired the reporter. Oh, they, you fired the, David not Leonhardt you, but they, is they great fired the, the reporter. Yeah, well, so, wait, wait, David, he's, and he's an outlier in the paper, but he's David, great. We're having wait, wait, he's on wait, the show wait, coming up. Wait, da uh, David, David Leonhardt gets the backing of the paper to the extent the morning. I know. The, he's the author okay. of the morning newsletter. Every single subscriber gets that, so he can't. It's, it can't be like there's the Times, but then David but Leonhardt. No, but, is the but his point of view is the is is at great variance with everything else in that paper on that issue. I'm sorry, I have to end it. We got to go to new rules. President Biden saying, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. You know, or, or Bette Midler being like, I'm willing to pay more. She's worth $250 million. This is class warfare masquerading as vanity morals. It's the morals of the elites. And who has to pay the price? It's the working class. It's the guy. It's, it's on the front. You know, they're saying, oh, they're going to buy electric cars. It's like, it's no, like the let them eat cake of no. 2020, right? Let them drive electric cars, right?